to me the most interesting approach is using segments. You can kind of think of it like this. Imagine a whole row of blocks leaving a factory on a conveyor belt. You're standing outside and you can press three buttons. A blue button, a yellow and a pink button. If you press the yellow button, yellow blocks will start leaving the factory. But it's important to realize that these are not blocks that are changing color. Let's take a look inside the factory. Now we see that these blocks are placed in a queue. So if you press the yellow button, it means that a yellow block will be placed next in the queue. That means that if a blue block is already leaving the factory the moment that you press the yellow button, that blue block will not turn yellow. Instead, it will have to leave the factory completely before a yellow block can leave the factory. These blocks, of course, represent music segments. Small chunks of music that when played one after the other sound like one piece of music. So, me pressing the yellow button is like the game telling the middleware the game state has changed to suspense. And as long as the game state doesn't change, the middleware will keep putting yellow suspense blocks in the queue. Now it's possible that yellow is a completely different kind of music from blue. So what you need then is a block that gently transitions between these colors. In music terms, that of course means you can write a small chunk of music that transitions from one style to the other. Notice how every block can also have a little part to the left and to the right that can overlap with other blocks. You can think of the big block as the main measures of a chunk of music. The edges of these big blocks are used to sync up these segments. The left part could be like a pickup note and the right part is like a reverb tail or a note ringing out. It's these guys that are going to allow for much more musical transitions than crossfading. You can think of this approach as slicing score sheets in little chunks of a few measures each. Changing intensity is achieved by jumping to a different segment. But if you look at it vertically, what's written doesn't change. Now, we're not gonna slice it straight like this. Because if there's a pickup note, I want it to be included at the front of this segment and not at the end of another segment. We'll get back to that. Slicing wave files would look kind of like this, but of course that's not going to sound very good. So how can we improve that? That's where dovetailing comes in. Dovetailing in orchestration is where you split up a part between two players alternating each other but it still sounds like one player is performing. Instead of slicing audio files, we are going to record each segment one segment at a time. We are going to include a pickup note if there is one, and we are going to include a tail if there is one. Then we are going to define markers so that we can sync up the first beat of the second segment with the last beat of the first segment. And the same thing for the other segments. This is how I actually implemented my music for the dome fight on top of the opera house. Notice how the tail of this segment overlaps with the next segment. This is the transition from silence to the first segment. This is what the first segment sounds like by itself. And this is what it sounds like when you cue these segments one segment after the other. hard to demonstrate how you would jump from one segment to the other, but what is interesting to show is the playhead jumping horizontally when the game state is changed.
the next step is exporting each segment as a separate audio file. And in WISE, we'll put these in a playlist. Got a playlist for combat, and got a playlist for suspense. Here's that first segment again, played by itself. And the second segment. Inside the playlist, these are all placed one after the other, sequentially. To transition between combat and suspense, I have to find a whole bunch of transition rules. The reason I did this is that unlike most adaptive music, I didn't want the music to stay in the same key. What that means is that if you're playing combat music and the game state has changed, that you cannot just jump to the first segment of the suspense playlist and expect it to sound right every time. Because I know which key every segment is in, I can now say, okay, if this particular combat segment is playing and the game state has changed, I don't want you to jump to the first segment of the suspense playlist, but I want you to jump to this particular segment. And of course, I also have a whole bunch of these rules when you're going back from suspense to combat. A nice consequence is that if you're constantly jumping between game states, that you're not always going to hear bar one over and over again. Let's look at the final result for this particular combat sequence.
Remember that jump in the movie Speed? That's what inspired me to do something similar in this particular sequence in the game Chameleon. Keep in mind that as a composer I have no control over the exact moment that the character is going to jump. Let's do that again. Notice that in this version we start the build-up music a little bit sooner, but it still syncs up perfectly with the jump. Is the timing always going to be exactly right? No, but that's a matter of making your segments as short as possible. In this level I've defined four regions and the deeper you dive, the deeper the music goes. The difference in music between the highest region and the lowest region is huge. But segments allow us to make these transitions very smoothly. Here's an example of using segments to move between combat and exploration. There you are!
segments are perfect for moving a story forward. Because every segment always rings out naturally, you can always just end the music on a segment if you want to transition to silence. It is possible that in this example they actually used a transition segment. It's a little hard to tell. Anyway, let's talk about transition segments. Next episode. See you then. Bye.